Okay guys, 10-4 radical equations. It's good to be back on time. Again, I apologize for last week for not having the screencast up and ready to go. Um, I'm back at it and have taken care of the technology problems here in, in the building and we're ready to go. Uh, when I do an equation, I'm going to solve for something. For example, uh, this is just very basic uh, from stuff we've done before. If I'm going to solve an equation, what I'm going to end up with at the end is solving for the variable. So in this case, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides. And so that's going to be x equals 7. Okay, Radical equations are the exact same process, except we're going to have radicals in them. And so they would look something like this. Let's get a basic one. Let's go with square root of a plus 5. A square root of a plus 5 plus 7 equals 12. Now, some things you need to recognize right away before you even start the problem. Understand what's underneath the square root bracket. So in this case, uh, a plus 5 is underneath the square root bracket, but the 7 is not. So I want to move everything away from the square root bracket first. So I'm going to move this 7 to the other side by subtracting it. And so that's going to cancel. That leaves me the square root of a plus 5 equals 5. Now, what I want to do at this point is I want to get rid of that square root bracket. So I have to think in my mind, OK, with that 7, I got rid of a positive 7 by subtracting it. So I did the opposite. So what is the opposite of taking the square root of something? And that will be putting it in parentheses and squaring it. And so I'm going to square the other side as well. What will happen is that square will cancel that square root, which will just leave me a plus 5 equals, and then 5 squared is 25. And now we're back to stuff that we're used to seeing that we've already seen before. Subtract 5 from both sides. And my final answer is a equals 20. OK, again, the opposite of a square root is, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, taking the square of it. So let's look at something a little bit different. This is example number three on page 625. Let's go square root of k plus 1 equals, and then on the other side, we're just going to have k minus 1. Okay. And so there's nothing on the outside of the square root bracket. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to square everything. So this is going to be k plus 1 equals. Now, off to the side, I need to remember that k minus 1 squared looks like this, Oop, minus. And so to solve that, I'm going to use the FOIL method. So that's going to be k squared. Over here, I'm going to get minus 1k minus 1k, which is minus 2k. And then my last terms, negative 1 times negative 1, is positive 1. Now, this kind of looks like a little mess here, but it's not that big a deal. We see that we're going to have a k squared, which is going to mean we're going to have a trinomial at the end. So let's get everything together. Let's subtract the 1 to the other side, because I want to get everything on the k squared side. Let's also subtract the k. So this cancels, leaving us 0. And I come up with k squared minus 3k. And then those cancel as well, equals 0. All right. So now I want to take that. And looking at it, it has some common factors. So I'm going to pull out the k. And this goes back to our last test in chapter 8 and 9. I want to actually solve these. 
And so I'm going to have k equals 0. And this one's going to be k um, equals 3, because I add 3 to both sides. Okay, and now just a little bit different. Um, at this point, I do need to check these, because sometimes you'll get a solution that does not work. Uh, it's called an extraneous solution, but we'll go over that at a later date. So I want to plug back in 0 and 3 and see if these work. And they go back into the original equation. So my original equation is square root of k plus 1 equals, what was that? Was that k? k minus 1. So let's take a look. Obviously we can plug the 0 in real quick. 0 plus 1 is 0, square root of 1, and then 0 minus 1. Square root of 1 is 1, and does 1 equal negative 1? Obviously it does not, so that is not going to be a solution that we want to use. Okay, so now let's look at it with the 3. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, let's go square root k plus 1 equals k minus 1. And now let's put the 3 in there. That's going to be square root of 4. That's going to be 3 minus 1. Square root of 4 is 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. All right, so this one does check, and it's good. So we only have one answer, and it's k equals 3. Okay. All right, let's look at one more example. That'll give us three to take a look at, and that should get us get us where we need to be. Um, how about four plus square root of h plus one equals? 14. Let's look at this guy. Alright, again, recognize what's not underneath the square root bracket. So we're going to move that first. So that cancels. We have square root of h plus 1 equals 10. Now we have a square root bracket, so our next step is we want to square everything. That's going to leave us with h plus 1, and 10 squared is 100. Finish it off with one step, subtract 1, and our final answer is h equals 99. And that's it for 10-4. I hope you guys have a good weekend. We will see you on Monday.